Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. He's finally here. The freest, free to play friendly featured 5 star character Shang Li Yao has graced every free to play by the way player in Wuthering Ways. Today, you will learn everything you need to know about Shang Li Yao in this ultimate guide video. Rubik's Cubes, Laser Arm Cannons, and Cute Doggos. What do all these have in common? Shang Li Yao. Shang Li Yao is the newest featured Lightning DPS 5 star resonator, and he's certain to weather some waves. Also, quick note this video was filmed on the media server, and things may be subject to change upon the official release. Please check the comments below to see if anything changed. He just cubes and lasers all over the place and is one of the coolest husbandos I've seen in a long time. We'll go over his kit, his best echoes and stats, weapons, sequences, teams, showcases, and my thoughts on Shang Li Yao. As usual, I'm here to translate this multi-page essay of a character's kit into cube-sized portions for you to digest. Shang Li Yao's kit, while having around 25 proper nouns, can actually just be summarized into two cube-shaped portions. His entire kit revolves around his resonance liberation, like how his cubes revolve around him. When he casts his resonance liberation, it deals an initial nuke and then summons three Rubik's Cubes which last for 24 seconds. His goal is to solve these Rubik's Cubes by filling up his five forte ticks so he can then explode these cubes onto his enemies. So naturally, how does he get forte during his resonance liberation? He has two main combo options. The first option is the laser arm combo. Channel your inner pro gamer by mashing the basic attack button, where he'll do a simple three hit combo and blast his enemies with his laser arm cannon on the third hit. These three hits provide him with five forte, at which point you can just press the skill button to explode a cube for some terrible, terrible damage. The second option to fill up his forte during his liberation is the epically named skill aerial combo. Yeah, I don't have any cool names for this one, so it'll just be the skill aerial combo. By performing his skill, Shang Li Yao will hop into the air at the end of it, allowing him to perform this fancy aerial attack. This skill plus aerial conveniently fills up his forte bar, which you can then press the skill button to promptly solve a Rubik's Cube by smashing it into your enemy's face. Now that we know his two main options for solving Rubik's Cubes during his liberation, first use his liberation, do a skill aerial combo, then his laser arm combo, and then another skill aerial combo to efficiently use all three of your cubes in an efficient and timely manner. Fortunately, Shang Li Yao has many tools to help him perform these two combos. First of all, he has increased resistance to interruption while he has Rubik's Cubes. This makes perfect sense as if you've seen people solve Rubik's Cubes, you know they're locked in and can't be disturbed. There's also some built-in time slow on the enemies during parts of his liberation, which helps him perform his combos uninterrupted. He can also swap off the field and swap back on without losing his Rubik's Cubes, and he gains 5% electric damage whenever he smashes that skill button, just like how you should smash that subscribe button. The full breakdown for his forte generation is right here, and it's worth noting that his dodge counter also regenerates two forte, so generally speaking it's fine to dodge counter to gain forte as well. Finally, we have Shang Li Yao's Outro Skill, in which the next character can hit the enemy with normal attacks for up to three additional lightning strikes against the enemy. These outro lightning strikes do have a long two second cooldown in between them though. Now you may have noticed that I skipped his kit outside of Liberation, because, well, frankly, the rest of his kit is mainly only good for clearing out overworld junk. There's honestly not too much you need to know about it, besides avoid using it if you care about actually doing damage with him. Again though, it's perfectly fine for taking out overworld stuff. For talent priority, prioritize his liberation and forte, and then eventually his normal attack and skill for overworld shenanigans, and lastly his intro skill. Let's take a look at a quick example rotation that incorporates everything we've learned thus far plus a bit more. In this example, we bring Shang Li Yao onto the field via his intro skill. I chose to use his skill and a heavy attack, which I cancelled the heavy attack's animation with his resonance liberation. The skill and heavy attack prior 
prior to his residence liberation is optional, but it's an effective and fast way to get two stacks on the five piece void thunder for the initial residence liberation nuke. Then I simply did the skill aerial combo, laser arm combo, and skill aerial combo to throw all three Rubik's cubes into Scar's face, and then outro it on out of there. After a bit of practice, this rotation becomes second nature and is my go-to rotation for him. Pierce through the stars. We finally made it to something that I'm sure a nerdy scientist like Shang Li Yao can appreciate, the math. Starting with his weapons. Fortunately for free to play players that chose the 5 star gauntlets from the weapon box, the Abyss Surges are a very solid option. His signature punchies, Verity's Handle, is only at around 19% better than the Abyss Surges. The Battle Pass Punchies Stonard, especially with refinements, is a great option. Although without refinements, it's about as good as the Hollow Mirage. So if you are a regular battle pass enjoyer and don't plan to pull on a signature weapon and don't have the abyss surges, then I do recommend investing into refinements into the stone art if you do plan to use this. Although even at refinement 5, it's still about 20% worse than his signature punchies. Now the best free to play option is the hollow mirage, but you do need to avoid getting hit to maintain its buff. And at this point, his weapon options are starting to fall very far behind his signature punchies. Up next are his stats and echoes, echoes, echoes. He has two main set options, the five piece void thunder, which has some awkwardness due to its stacking mechanics and the five piece lingering tunes, which is a solid option for him because with certain teams, he's incentivized to stay on the field. Both of these are perfectly reasonable options for him and it's hard to go wrong with either. As usual, he'll want the 43311 build with for most weapons, a crit rate four cost echo and double electro or electro plus attack percent for the three cost. The Thundering Mephis is probably your go-to four cost choice for the Void Thunder and the Mech Abomination is obviously for the Lingering Tunes. However, it is worth noting that for his signature weapon, as we could see earlier in the weapon chart, a crit damage main stat plus attack percent three cost plus electro damage three cost is the best combination that I could come up with. As for energy recharge, I personally found around 130 to 140% energy recharge to be a very comfortable spot, consistently getting his liberation back with full rotations. For substat priority, it's the usual crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, energy recharge, and resonance liberation damage. Pierce through the stars. As for his sequences, well, everyone always skips this section, so here is some secret footage I found of Shang Li Yao. All his earlier sequences are decent, and basically just increases damage by 10 to 15%. His sequence 4 provides liberation damage to the team, and his sequence 5 and 6 are where his big damage gains are at. So yeah, for the 1% of whales out there, just know that you need to go all the way to his later sequences for his sequences to be worth it. Now between his sequence 1 and his signature weapon, I definitely recommend his signature weapon before his sequence 1. What other Rubik's Cubes enthusiasts are there for Shang Li Yao? Well, naturally, Shang Li Yao is a natural fit with Yin Lin, whose outro skill buffs electro damage and resonance liberation damage. Just remember that you'll lose this buff if you swap Shang Li Yao off the field. For the third slot, you guessed it, it's Varina. The main question is though, who else can we use instead of Yin Lin? In theory, Jin Xin seems like an okay choice, but I personally found her slow concerto gain to be really painful to use with him. Still, I'm sure many of you players that are much better than me will make it work, but I personally struggle to do so. The next best option I had was with San Hua. While her basic attack amplify does very little for Shang Li Yao, her sequence 6's 20% attack buff, as well as her super fast outro for the Moonlit Clouds and Heron buffs, make her a reasonable option. In fact, her rotation times are so short that it often led me to having extra time to actually use the Thundering Memphis. So far for me personally, San Hua has been my favorite option, especially for free to play players. Besides that though, no other characters really stood out to me as having great synergy with Shang Li Yao. Pierce through the stars. All right, we've reached the showcase section for Shang Li Yao and I'm just gonna commentate like I usually do for these sections. And starting off, we have, you know, Verena because, well, at the moment, she's an irreplaceable support, as well as San Hua. Now, both Shang Li as well as San Hua are using the uh, standard five-star weapons with the R1 Abyss Surges on Shang Li Yao, as well as the Emerald of Genesis, if that's what the sword is called, on San Hua. 
And what I really like about Sanhua is just how low her field time is and how consistent she is for outputting the Moonlit buff plus the Heron buff, which ultimately, you know, that's a huge portion of the buffs that come from support characters is really just from the Echo sets, at least currently in the game. And we can see here that just like that, um, we have so much extra time that we are even able to squeeze in a Thundering Memphis. And if you know anything about the Thundering Memphis, you know that it is uh, one of the slower Echoes that you can use. So that is the power of low field time from a character like Sanhua is you are able to actually squeeze that out. Not only does it do some reasonable damage, but it also provides him those nice buffs to his actual rotations damage, which you love to see. And thanks to just how fluid and everything that this team runs, you see there another Tempest, a Thundering Memphis. Sorry, I get the two of them mixed up. The Thundering and the Tempest Memphis look really, really similar. But yeah, and we're just doing these very standard rotation combos with the Arm Laser Cannon. And in this case, one of the attacks missed, so we had to go for an extra N1. And into, you know, just blowing Rubik's Cubes up into Scar's face. So the next team is the Yin Lin team. I'm sure a ton of people are going to be really curious about his performance with Yin Lin. And I will say, you know, the two of them obviously work well together. Uh, th there's no question about that considering the lightning outro boost that Yin Lin provides. Now me personally, I'm pretty rusty or something with Yin Lin. It's taking me a bit longer than I would like to get her forte as well as her um, concerto energy full in order to swap uh, Xiang Li Yao back onto the field. And I'm sure that other players that, you know, really kind of master their Yin Lin play more than me, because, you know, it's, it's, it's been a hot minute since I've used Yin Lin, gotta be honest, are gonna be able to significantly shorten these rotation times. We can see the damage numbers are much larger at around 200,000 damage with the initial hit. And if we're able to really shorten those rotation times, we can have some very impressive play with this team. Now, it is worth noting that Sheng Li Yao as well as Yin Lin are both using their signature weapons in this case. And I wanted to, you know, just do a quick run showcasing you, to you guys, you know, what kind of power you can expect with signature weapons. And it is a significant increase, but, you know, it's not a direct one-on-one -on -one comparison between this and San Hua because obviously Yin Lin provides lightning as well as liberation damage amplify. But still a very reasonable performance and I think there's a ton of room to improve. Uh, for these runs in comparison to what I was able to do with them at least and we're just shy of finishing him off with the past the previous rotation So this went for a quick ultimate to finish scar off an easy three Dorito for both teams So what do I think about Shang Li Yao? Well, he's free, so therefore he's already awesome. He's an Electro DPS character who, well, in my opinion, is a fun and easy to use character that has the quality of life that you'd expect from a 5 star featured character. He's also quite flexible, having a long time to chuck his 3 cubes, not losing his cubes while swapping, and just being an awesome dude with lasers and a robot arm. Honestly, it's hard to go wrong with him. Let me know what you think about Shang Li Yao down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.